What if our consciousness, the very essence of who we are, is nothing more than a quantum phenomenon? For decades, this has been considered a frontier idea, almost a philosophical speculation more than a real scientific theory. But what if I told you that things are changing, and they are changing fast? We have in our hands the results of some revolutionary studies that provide new, fascinating experimental clues. We are no longer just talking about theories, but about data emerging from laboratories. So, if you want to be at the forefront of what could be one of the biggest scientific revolutions of our time, you're in the right place. Stay with me, because what I'm about to share is truly astounding. And while you're at it, if you're as fascinated as I am by the mysteries of the universe and our place in it, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to not miss any updates on this incredible story. Okay, but before we dive into the new data, let's take a step back. What are we talking about when we talk about quantum consciousness? In the 1990s, the famous physicist Sir Roger Penrose and anesthetist Stuart Hameroff proposed a bold idea known as the Orchestrated Objective Reduction Theory. Their hypothesis is that consciousness is not a computable process, similar to software running on our brain's hardware. Rather, it would emerge from real quantum processes that occur within our neurons, particularly in tiny structures called microtubules. The main problem, as many physicists have pointed out, is that the brain is a hot, wet, and messy place. Such an environment is generally considered hostile to quantum physics, which usually requires temperatures near absolute zero and perfect isolation like what we see in modern quantum computers. For a long time, this seemed like an insurmountable obstacle. But then, something started to move. Some time ago, the first important piece of the puzzle arrived. A study provided the first concrete clues that microtubules, precisely the structures indicated by Penrose and Hameroff, can indeed support quantum effects at room temperature. The researchers discovered that these structures, which play a crucial role in transporting signals in the brain, can exhibit a quantum phenomenon called superradiance. In essence, they observed that tryptophan molecules inside the microtubules can act collectively, absorbing and emitting light in a way enhanced by quantum mechanics. The most surprising thing is that this process proved to be unexpectedly robust, not easily disturbed by the environmental noise of the brain. The study showed, both through computer models and laboratory experiments, that these quantum effects could even have a protective role, shielding cells from ultraviolet light damage. Be careful, this did not directly prove that consciousness is quantum. But it was a fundamental step. It showed that the basic requirement of the theory was not just a hypothesis, but a concrete possibility. It opened a glimpse, and now new clues have opened that door wide. And this brings us to the most recent and exciting news. A team of scientists from Shanghai University working independently found evidence of another quantum process in a different part of the neuron, the myelin sheath. Myelin is that fatty layer that insulates the axons of our neurons, helping signals travel quickly and efficiently. Think of it as the insulating coating of an electrical cable. These researchers, using sophisticated mathematical models, hypothesize that the myelin sheath can act as a quantum cavity. Here is their fascinating discovery. The carbon-hydrogen bonds in the lipid molecules of myelin could generate pairs of entangled photons, or quantumly correlated photons. The phenomenon of entanglement is one of the most counterintuitive aspects of quantum mechanics, what Einstein called spooky action at a distance. It means that two particles can be linked in such a way that they behave as a single system, instantaneously, regardless of the distance separating them. The study suggests that interaction with infrared photons can trigger a cascade of emissions in myelin, creating these pairs of entangled photons. 
Why is this so important? One of the great mysteries of consciousness is how millions of neurons in different areas of the brain can synchronize their activity almost instantaneously. Electrical signals, as we know them, are simply too slow to explain this perfect harmony. But if entangled particles were involved, then it would indeed be explained much better. This new research, therefore, not only supports the idea of the presence of quantum phenomena in the brain, but also proposes a potential mechanism for the transfer of quantum information. So what does all this mean? The first clues showed us that microtubules can host quantum effects. Now, this new research suggests that the myelin sheath could generate and sustain quantum entanglement. It's as if we are discovering more and more places in the brain where the laws of quantum mechanics not only apply, but could be actively exploited. These two discoveries do not contradict each other. On the contrary, they reinforce each other, supporting the central idea of the Penrose and Hameroff theory that the brain may have evolved to exploit quantum phenomena. The Chinese team points out a fascinating detail. The physical dimensions of myelin in the human brain seem to be almost optimal for the creation of this entanglement. They also note that pathologies such as neurodegenerative diseases and the aging process are associated with a thinning of myelin, which could, speculatively, disrupt these quantum effects. We are at a fascinating crossroads where physics, neuroscience, and philosophy meet. For so long, the idea of a quantum mind has been a beautiful speculation. Now, we have theoretical results and experimental clues that are transforming that speculation into a testable hypothesis. Let's be clear, we have not yet reached definitive proof. The next giant step will be to be able to experimentally detect these phenomena in a living brain, a challenge of enormous complexity, but one that scientists are already thinking about. But the implications, if these hypotheses are confirmed, are astounding. If our thoughts, our feelings, our very sense of self were born from the quantum world, it could reshape everything we think we know about life, death, and the nature of reality. We might discover that we are biological quantum computers whose consciousness is an emergent property of the most fundamental laws of the universe. What do you think? Are we on the verge of a completely new understanding of consciousness? Leave a comment below. I'm really curious to read your opinions. And if you found this video fascinating, please give it a like and share it with anyone who, like you, loves to question the nature of reality. Thanks for following me. And as always, stay curious.